And that is Black Resumes, Quentin. Let's welcome him up. Made more money than H3 and any other idea I've ever had uh, over the last several months. 
Um, so major milestones. So we interview over 50 different uh, technical recruiters, hire managers. Um, we constantly interview black technical recruiters from agency and corporate just to get their challenges and what they're seeing. Uh, we've signed a sourcing agreement with Adam Exchange. Um, we've done over 10 talent acquisition events. Um, I had my first win, uh, I pitched competition on 11 9. Uh, so that was our first company milestone. Um, we spoke with Work Llama, a Microsoft diversity sourcing team. We have three business analyst product boot camps. Um, we have about 500 total resumes in our database. Um, just really quick, the market is growing. There's a need for simple systems and need for adaptability. Diversity is not going anywhere. Um, Diversity recruit market is about 357 million. There's about 79, 79 million black Americans. Um, just really quick, um, compared to my competitors, um, I looked at two, Junko and Black Tech, Pipe, uh, black tech Pipeline. Um, none of the current founders or the platform itself are connected to those black and brown ecosystems. After talking to them. some of my customers, uh, I learned that the quality of talent that they were getting from these sources were not there. Um, so they were, so for example, they may have been looking for a business analyst, but they were getting a call center rep. So there was not a good translation of talent. Um, and then they come from no recruiting background um, based on the level of providing the right talent. I don't know why this um, came out like that, but our pricing, um, if your organization does about 20 to 149 openings, we'll charge them about $1,000. 150 to 500 is 3,000 to have access to the candidates. Um, we also take a percentage placement of the candidate if they're a source from our, our talent pipeline. Currently, from a traditional model, um, they take about 20 to 25%. If you're using our platform, we give you a reduction. Um, also, preparing diversity recruiting events and then our standard business to business, business, to business service. Our business to customer service is our resident service and then our training courses. Uh, what we need, we need about sixty-five to $70,000 to actually build the platform in its entirety. I have a, do have a demo of the platform, um, and this will help um, build out our platform, customer acquisition, and then for me, just a startup coach. Um, I've been really successful on my own, but I think as you elevate and go, you actually need coaches uh, or people that have been or traveled the path. Um, and so I think I'm at the point where I've got it done and turned up every rock that I know. Um, so just looking for more coaches. A coach. Um, our consultants. Uh, Aaron Moose, one of my best friends, he's a technical recruiter that got me into the game. Um, Will Featherstone is our innovation strategy. He allows me to just yell and think really crazy and puts it together. Uh, Brent is our marketing person somewhere in here. And then Ashley Hargraves is the diversity, diversity, equity, inclusion executive at Hill Yeah, Hill. Well, this is great. Um, and like you, like you're a good presenter and a charismatic individual, and I like applaud your resilience. Well done. Um, so I do a lot of hiring. Um, I've hired probably 50 people at Pazer, and I've probably hired I don't know how many in my life, but hundreds, right? And uh, I think that the service that you're providing candidates is really needed. Um, many, many, many of the candidates that I see today independent of their ethnic kind of background, they're really poorly prepared. Right. Um, and it's not just their resumes that need help. Uh, they are unfamiliar with um, how to interact with hirers, and they often undermine themselves in ways that they don't even realize. And so um, I think that offering resume service is great. I think that uh, there may be some real potential for you to expand your services to your clients, um, to include coaching them on how to interview, and coach them on how to prepare. Um, like, it's extraordinarily common for us um, when we hire somebody, they'll come in for an interview and they will have done no research on our company and they'll have nothing to write on or with. Right, right. And so they just, they seem, they could be a very nice, personable, and good and intelligent person and they just seem like a rookie, right? And so I kind of I kind of have three things I want to say. One is, I feel as though the customers you're gonna acquire um, you should offer them more services. Okay. Right? So we do. So yeah, great. Holistically, the approach is, so I manage artists, um, and I realize that it takes artists, to be a superstar artist, you need all of these people in your life to do certain, yeah. certain things. So the full players part, platform has your ability to contact, contact coaches, resume writers, right. skills-based training. So I want to be able to say, when I, let's say Wells Fargo is looking for the next black and brown CMO. 
Like this person is in our ecosystem. You know, companies don't do a great job of training and developing because we're producing widgets. Mm. Um, my company wants to come in and help you do that holistically so we're involved 360 around this right. person's career. I watch Russell Simmons. I watch people get to be really successful by holistically managing products and not just how I'm gonna give you this one service and you're gonna cut me a check complete. I think the value for me of just learning was one great candidate knows three other great candidates and so I'm just kind of leveraging much more than sure. from a holistic standpoint. Yeah. So so my first thing that's good. My first thing was you can offer more services to these clients you partners. Second, um, are you familiar with what used to be Charlotte's agenda, it's now called Axios? Yes. Yeah. So they make a ton of their money on job postings on their job board. Yeah. Um, you can charge a lot of money for a posting on a job board. You probably already know that, yeah. right? <laughs> and like like for us, spending two hundred and fifty or five hundred bucks a month on a posting on a job board where we get some candidates, that's an easy yes. Okay. Right? So I don't know if that's part of your stack. Yep. But like that would be an easy thing to do. And third, on your ask, um, you're not at, in my opinion, you're not asking for it. If you ask for sixty five to seventy thousand dollars, that's a signal to professional investors that you're thinking small. Right? I would encourage you to think about what would I do with a quarter million or a half million, right? Because a professional investor is going to, unless, unless you really want to target angels, unless you really want to target an individual, if, if you ask for an amount like that, any investment firm, they'll just pass based on that, right? Do you, you share that perspective? I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. we would pass for sure. Okay. Like we could do angel you know, for yeah, right. Because you're, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, like, and, and like having more capital, like, you strike me as a person that, like, I'll, this is something I say to strangers when I meet them and I think they're good. If you were a stock, I would buy you, right? Because, like, I think if you had additional capital to go pursue what you're going after, like, I sort of feel like the, like, you're not limited by the scope of your vision, right? And so, don't limit yourself by the scope of your resources, in my opinion. Right. That, that's my three pieces of feedback. I would also like to know what song you were doing for. Say Mark Braxton uh, called Love and War. Um, nice. I have some songs on All American that come from CW. Um, I have some songs that put on the show called F Club on Netflix. Nice. Uh, like one or two more. <coughs> Thanks, Thanks. Right. Yeah. I dream really big. I was going to ask for uh, my two big competitors. They, I think they were just about 10 million, now those 50 million. So I kind of thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'll start. Um, I'll start with the uh, the idea, which is uh, in in the for first first checks, I'm betting on you, right? And I would agree with Chris. You strike me as quote unquote venture backable or scalable, right? You one of the main things I'm always looking for is mission orientation. Is, is this the person that should be building? Right? Are they uniquely positioned? And I think, I think you need to lead with your story, right? Like you were kind of reading on the slides, and then you got to the like my experience, and then you were on, right? You were telling me, you were like, you were educated, right? And so, to me, the combo of why you're the right person is, hey, I'm I'm a, I'm a graduate from college. I worked in these. I worked for two of the biggest artists that there are. I was very successful. I saw what it's like to manage talent. And then I moved here and I got boxed into a call center job, right? And I have lived the problem of being either not having the right pipeline into the job that I want, being underestimated, whatever it was, right? So you've lived the problem and yet you've also had a great experience that suggests that you can, that you can solve the problem, right? That's the, I mean, honestly, as an investor who would, who writes first checks, like, you can almost throw every other slide away. Like, that's the first question. Like, to me, if we get past that question, then then we'll get into the, the I, I agree, 65 to 70K is like, um, doesn't strike me as enough. Now, the one thing I was, was like, we got all the way to the back, and when you said that, I was like, oh crap, I thought this product was farther along, right? Like, in my head and your build up, in my, this was a Me too. working product, you would make it, you like, I was like, okay, like I was living it in my head, and then when you said 65 to 70 can, like, oh, this is a PowerPoint, right? So I think that that's fine, but I would, I probably, within this pitch, I probably go to some level of like, help me mock up, help me see what's in your head, 
and then ask for a bigger ask. Like, hey, I want to, I want to hire a developer. I want to do this, and I want to like, I want to go out and devote myself full time to sales and, and all these other kind of things. So, I agree. I think I, I don't know if 250 to 500, if you're pre product, is going to work exceptionally well in the Charlottes and Southeast of the world. But 100 to 150 seems very doable. Um, I also think, you know, setting it up for the right investors. I, I've got to believe that one Charlotte's a town that's recognized. You know, recognizes its own issues in terms of economic opportunity and inclusion. There is a ton of money out there that is talking about that, whether for whatever reason, whether it's like I believe it or I'm ashamed of my past or whatever it is. But people are working on that problem. So I think the amount of capital that's available to someone here locally in Charlotte that wants to solve that problem is higher than many other places. Um, and in that first pitch, you know, it's a, do I like this person and do I like what they're doing? I think the kind of people that get involved, the angels that are writing into a 150K round are doing it because they want this thing to exist. Yeah. They're not underwriting the cash on cash return per se, right? Um, so, you know, I think those are kind of the big things, like really lead with you right. and your experience and your mm -hmm. having lived it, because in the end, I. I guarantee you that if you do that and then some, you know, clean up of this, like, you'll raise what you want. And, yeah, and, yeah. and I think this is true of almost everybody that we see here over a long time, like I've been doing this 10 years or so, something like that. Fewer slides, fewer words, bigger font, because the slides, the, story. the slides always undermine the entrepreneur because they feel like they got to get through all this detail, yeah. right? And like, you're... By the time you get into the detail, you're swamping the audience. But not you, but like, like you a little bit, but like anyone, right? Like, they're just trying to grab on to the basic concept of what you're talking about, right? And so, like, for anyone who's like thinking about this or watching this, it's it's brutally hard to reduce the number of slides, reduce the number of words, and make the fonts bigger. And when you do so, the quality of the communication skyrockets, right? Because if people say, "Can you tell me more?" you're winning. Right. Like you're free winning. It also it also pulls yeah. that crutch away from you, which is that desire to want to turn around and tell them read yeah. me what's on the slide. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't want to read what's on the slide. I want to hear you tell me you why 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 I should be engaged. And the, like, the, the, bet, the the most difficult best manager I ever had, if I had a meeting with him, he would say, Okay, um, in ten words or less, tell me why we're talking. Ten words, holy shit, man. Like, come on, man. You know? But like when I went in I knew what I wanted to talk about. You know, and I could tell like and I could tell him. We could have that meeting and it would like be successful. This ten words is not very many. He was Twitter before Twitter. <laughs> yeah. It was great. Yeah, all right, yeah. Thank you. Yeah.